Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Before we jump in, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. So I've been given a request to talk about the different kinds of triathlon. So what I thought I'd do is jump into a call with three different professionals, boom, boom and boom, and get a bit of an insight into what their style is and what's to come in the future. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Alrighty guys, so what I thought I'd do is start off talking about my favourite style of triathlon, which is Super League Triathlon. Super League Triathlon is very fast and aggressive racing that goes over the course of a weekend. What we're going to do is jump into a call with one of the founders of Super League. He's a four-time world champion and legend of the sport, Chris McCormack, otherwise known as Macca. Thank you so much for giving up a little bit of your time to talk to us a bit about Super League Triathlon and how... That'll work. So to kick things off, what inspired you to start the Super League series? Oh, well, geez. Um, I used to race many years ago, obviously. And uh, I think when you retire from the, the sport, you reflect on, you know, two things. What you used to enjoy when you're doing it. You know, you'll realise this when you get a little older that you look back on your career and what you used to enjoy doing. And then you know, what the legacy is you can leave behind if, uh, as you move out, migrate out of the sport. And I, I, I was reflective on my career and I really loved my years as a junior racing and we used to have a very similar style of racing in Australia called the Formula One series and, uh, yeah. and it didn't exist anymore. I just believed that it was a fantastic opportunity to bring that type of racing back. There was a whole new generation of young stars that yeah. really needed a platform to, to shine and, mm -hmm. and um you know, I went out and started talking to some people about it and they said I was a dreamer. And my whole life I've been told that, uh, you know, what I can't do, not what I can do. So I was sort of the, the stick that sort of inspired me to, to try and chase, chase some funding and, and chase an idea and, and make it a reality. So fundamentally the, the desire was to, to, to create a professional series for your generation of athletes and the younger generation of athletes yeah. that gave them a platform to to go on to greater things because I just I just believe in the sport of triathlon and I believe the talent the talent pool in in the sport right now all around the world is remarkable but there's just no no platform that allows this young talent to yeah. to shine so that's how I got there yeah that's that's, cool. it's gone pretty well yeah that's awesome <laughs> so obviously Super League triathlons it's still pretty new it's been around for maybe four or five years or something like that so how does Super League racing differ from your, you know, your Ironman and ITU racing, and how does it all actually work? Yeah, well, look, Super League, um, you, you know, for those who don't know, I'm assuming everyone does, but, you know, triathlon as a, as a sport was built around two elements, the Ironman and then the ITU racing. The Ironman is a mass participation-driven business model, which means it's built for amateurs to compete, and there is a professional element attached to it. But yep. the actual business model is not really built around professionalism. It's not like the NRL or the AFL or these sort of sports yep. where it's a professional sport, spectators watch. And then you have the WTS series, the ITU, which is all built around Olympic qualification. So high-performance programs within each country. Uh, funds are allocated to, to athletes to pursue Olympic aspirations. And there is a series that allows it to happen to accumulate points and it pays a bit of prize money and it does that. But none of those two entities have a built with any professional framework in place. There's no desire to create a professional league. So we, I saw the opportunity to go to the television networks and say, look, here's this really cool sport. There's I'm in, there's ITU. What do we have to do to make it more professional? How can I make it like NBA or, or, yeah. or the NFL or these sort of sports? And they said, look, it needs to be shorter and it needs to be more athlete focused. And, and those other two entities, Ironman and WT, ITU, can't do that because they have a different mandate. Yeah. So with that, with that empowerment, I said, well, let's shorten it up. Let's make some formats that are really, really, you know, 18 to 20 minutes of racing, you know, um, that, that, that are appealing to an audience that probably don't know much about triathlon but are happy to sit back and, and watch something. Yeah. And it's not so predictable. And if you yeah. watch the WTS series, and it's hard to say this because I'm a, I'm a mad fan of triathlon, probably like yourself. Yeah. So I, I recall in, in 2016, uh, um, the Rio Olympics were on and um, and we had a big party in Brazil. I have a couple of friends in Brazil were there. We couldn't get yeah. down to the event. And I had a whole bunch of friends that I sort of grew up with on the circuit and their partners now. And we had a massive party in Rio de Janeiro 
and we mm-hmm. put the Olympic triathlon on. And and everyone was in this room watching, and I was also excited. A couple of my friends, and uh, the race started, and within five minutes, the hundred people that were in the room, you know, thirty people started to walk away because the swim's quite boring in a WTS yeah. event. Yeah. Unless you know, unless you know what's happening, right? Yeah. Totally. And then. You know, the, the transition happened and, and they came back and watched the television and then the, they're on the bike and it sort of goes round and round for an hour. Yeah. And, and you know, by that point, there was only about eight of us left watching the, <laughs> the, the telecast. And then uh, everyone came back and watched the last couple of hundred metres and, and Alistair winning his second gold medal. And yeah. I realised then that there was a major problem with with the sport from a, from a viewer's point of view. Yeah. It was quite yeah. boring and predictable. So that's where we, we came up with that whole concept of Super League, Different format, really short, limited number of athletes, owning their uniforms, rewarding certain things within a race, identifying athletes that are good swimmers, good bikers, good runners, and trying to, to teach an un an un an un, what do you call it, an untrained audience, I guess, people who don't do triathlon, give them some sort of relevance on who these athletes are and make the racing unpredictable. And the proof's been in the pudding. So in we're three years old now. We're coming up this was gonna be our fourth year, but yeah. this coronavirus is you know, created havoc on everything we do. Yeah. But in that, in that space of time, we, we, you know, last year we had four and a half million people watching uh, Super League triathlon. And to give you yeah. some sort of comparison to, to that, the most watched triathlon in, in history outside the Olympic Games is an event in Hamburg, the WTS yeah. event in Hamburg. And that, that has only 700,000 people watching it. So we are five times more, oh, yeah. more, more, viewership than, than any other triathlon entity so we're on the right track we just need to get some more time under the belt and more yeah. momentum so it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool yeah awesome awesome yeah. so obviously um what would be some exciting things to look forward to in the future of super league look uh, you know in, uh, when, when we started i was you know, I was very bullish, I guess. I, was, I thought we're going to just, everyone was going to jump on board and everyone was going to love what we're doing. And the Ironman was going to say, fantastic, we love Super League. The ITU was going to go, oh, great, how can we help? But that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Everyone suddenly, it was like, oh, wow, these guys are actually players. And, um, and so there was a few hurdles we had to, yeah. there were, you know, a few obstacles that were thrown our way that we didn't anticipate. Yeah. And we obviously had to become a little bit more diplomatic and, and, I had to put my politician's hat on, which I'm not very, very good at doing, yeah. and, uh, and and come to the table and 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 discuss with these with these other major parties how we could coexist, and we've sort of come to an agreement, you know, over some time that this is what Super League can look like, and so how what we did, we've now set up an office in London. The primary our primary office is in London. We have an, an office in Singapore. Yeah. And what was going to happen this year was we're going to have a seven-race championship series that was going to start in August and finish in November. Um, we want to finish in a calendar year. So the reason we're starting in August, we were technically supposed to be in Singapore two weeks after the Olympic Games. Yeah. Then we had an event in uh, Oslo, an event in London, an event in Jersey, an event in Malta, an event in Burku, and then the final was in um, Dubai. So, um, a yeah. Saudi, sorry. And right. uh, that, was, that was the season. And we, had, we just bought an event in Malibu yeah. in, uh, in, in the USA, in Los Angeles, which was going to become in the 2021 series, which will now be 2022, which um, another race in a series. So, there'd be an eight-race championship series, sort of like Formula One. Yeah. Really lock them up so over, over a 12-week period. So, it's like bang, 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 get some momentum. And then literally when that last race finished, have a, a second division qualification series um, starting in, we had an event in, in Barkley, we have an event in, we're looking at an event here in Manly in Australia and yeah. building out this global, these two tier series, like a, and exactly if, you, if you're if a fan of surfing, which I've always yeah, been, I'm it's exactly like the surfing. Yeah, yeah, WQS series, qualification yeah. series and uh, the, the World Series. And that's sort of how we wanted to do it. And we got the sign off with the ITU that would allow us to do that as yeah. long as we didn't encroach on their racing. And uh, they're, they're having a few issues, uh, uh, you know, a few issues with trying to retain uh, um, venues because, yeah, um, yeah the, 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 the business model for them is getting more and more difficult as well. They need to shut down cities and, and, and that's hard when you, when you rely on mass participation. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for your time, Maka. It means a lot. I'm sure a lot of people who oh, watch this will be <laughs> awesome to give you an insight. And, uh, yeah, no thank you. Anytime. 
So there you go guys, that was a little bit of an insight into how Super League Triathlon started and what to expect to see in the coming years. Now we're going to talk about our second style of triathlon which is ITU. So your ITU stands for your International Triathlon Union and consists of two to three different kind of events going from your Olympic distance which is a 1500m swim, 40k bike, 10km run, you have your sprint distance which is half of that distance, 750 swim, 20k bike, 5k run, and then you have your mixed team relay. So that's two male and two female athletes who each take part in their own individual triathlon, a 300m swim, 6 to 7k bike, and a 1600m run. Now we're going to jump into a call with our current Olympic bronze medalist and Commonwealth Games champion from South Africa, Henry Schumer. Alright, so let's jump straight into it. I know you've got a pretty busy schedule, so don't want to take up too much time. So, Henry, out of all the ITU races, obviously you've got three disciplines, you've got your Olympic distance, obviously there's the mixed team relay. What's your preferred or favourite style out of those three? Um, I mean, I, I think it's it's fair enough to even add in some Super League. Like, that's a, a distance by itself as well. And, uh, I mean, in, in terms of the ITU, I do prefer the Olympic distance. I feel that there's it, it brings out a little bit more of uh, the true triathlete at the end of the race. Yeah. It doesn't – the sprint race normally comes down to, like, a run race a lot of the times. And then it's, like, the best runners winning on the day. But – an Olympic distance, you can play in some tactics, you can maybe push a little bit in the swim, create a breakaway. Some yeah. guys get to get on work, or uh, some guys attempt some breakaways because they know it's a good chance to get away. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and then it's also like the endurance factor is uh, something that I also prefer. Yeah. So the Olympic distance I do favor, even though I've had pretty good results over sprint and, and Olympic distance. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like, Super League is another one throwing in uh, into the mix and really, really enjoying that. Like, I think that's the ultimate, uh, like, version of a triathlon that brings out, you know, the best triathlete with no weaknesses. So yeah. I'm really enjoying that at the moment. Yeah, awesome. All right, so you've raced all over the world with your in the WTS, WTS scandal and obviously a lot of World Cups. So out of all the races that you've done, what's been your favorite so far and why? Uh, yeah, like, I mean, I've done, I've done quite a bit. There, there have been like some good ones that I've really enjoyed. Um, but there's one that always sticks out and it's from 2013. Uh, it's the, uh, racing up the Kitzbühel Horn, um, where, where there was a WTS in Kitzbühel and it was the first of its kind. And there has only been one of that race. So it was basically a sprint kind of swim, 750 meters. Yeah. And we raced, I think it was in total about, 12 or 13 Ks on the bike, oh, yeah. but it went um, uphill. So I think the average gradient was like 14 or something percent. And yeah, you, right. it was like seven Ks or, or eight Ks of climbing. And then yeah. we ran a further two and a half Ks up the, up the mountain. So that was really unique and something different from the usual triathlon. And I really enjoyed that. Like, I really wish they brought it back. Like, I think yeah. a lot of athletes would also enjoy that. Yeah, sounds good. All right, so obviously, you being such an amazing athlete, you've obviously competed at the Olympics and done well with getting a bronze medal and then bettering that result at the Commonwealth Games, getting a gold medal. How did it feel winning a bronze medal versus winning a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games? <laughs> it's hard to compare. I mean, yep. both of them are, are, are very close to my heart. Like, yep. um, coming out in 2016 to win that medal, I mean, no one really had me to, to win a medal. Um, yeah. Of course, I believed I could, but, you know, it would take, like, a phenomenal performance because I've never been on a major podium in my life before that moment. Yeah. So to the, the first thought of just running in that last, uh, in the last seven and a half Ks when I ran myself into the third spot, uh, that was just... Um, quite a moment for me and I, and I still remember it vividly uh, to this day is uh, I, st I actually got goosebumps and shivers um, because of the excitement and like what's really happening in that moment yeah uh, but that last like 100 200 meters um, running into the finish shoot like that's when it all just came over me and like the emotions and uh, yeah just like 
it, it's, it's hard to put into words, but it's just yeah. uh, s- such an amazing feeling. So I um, felt like so accomplished and um, especially with what was going on before the races that I was sick and yeah. um, thoughts of like not even starting. So yeah, um, yeah it was, it was like, came over a huge barrier and a huge obstacle and uh, managed to come out with a medal. So that was amazing. Um, the Commonwealth Games, uh, I mean, a champion, it, it's hard to beat like being crowned a champion. So Commonwealth Games is still a major event for us in the Commonwealth countries. And especially around here in South Africa, um, it's got a big following. So to be able to, um, you know, perform in front of my country um, and, and, you know, bring home the first gold medal, it was uh, it was like really a big achievement. And, and like, yeah, I mean, like the the adrenaline just coming through me, coming into that finish was was amazing because I just went for it. I didn't even look back. Yeah, went from it as soon as I came into that transition and uh, just yeah, I mean it, it all paid off. I was in some amazing shape. Yes, came off a, a win from a WTS before that a month ago. So yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just uh, everything lined up and worked really well. Yeah, awesome. And like I said, you you got a really busy schedule, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. So we'll go with one more. Oh, question. No worries. A lot of Thank a lot you. of us triathletes know you as a super fish. You know, you had the blue jersey. <laughs> Uh, in the Super League Triathlon. So this is just one for all the triathletes. What would you say is your favourite swim set? Ah, favourite swim set. So um, there, there's one that really comes to mind uh, that I really enjoy. It's it's a bit of like a play of speed almost, but it, mm-hmm. it, it, it ends up really hard. And it's uh, so the main set is uh, four 300s, descend one to four. Um, we'd be sending off on a four minutes, four five, four ten, four fifteen, 4 15. Um, and then it would be four 150s. Um, no, sorry, four 200s, descend one to four again. Yep. Send off on 245, 250, 255, three minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, four 150s, same descend one to four. Uh, on two minutes, 205. 210 and 215 and then four 100s descend one to four and that like it i mean the first of the easy easier ones is not easy easy you're still pushing like uh 345 for 300 yeah so i mean it's not cruising but you descend between 345 and to like a 320 or 315 so okay. um that that set i do like it's uh yeah, I mean, what, when you finish that set, like your arms are just buggered. And uh, yeah. it's yeah. like a play of speed as well. So you get to learn like some different speed paces um, and you really get to know what kind of speed you're swimming at. Um, it, it, it's just like a really good, uh, like a yeah, mentally and, and physically challenging set. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Cool. Yeah. All righty. Thank you so much for being here and let me give you a little short interview on how IT racing works. Look forward to oh. catching up with you hopefully sometime in the near future. Maybe if I can give my chance of getting a golden ticket on one of the qualifying Super League races, I might be able to see you there. So thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, it was great chatting. And uh, yeah, good luck with the YouTube videos for now. But uh, once we get out there, definitely look forward to seeing you on a start line and racing you soon. Absolutely. So there you go, there was a small insight into how ITU racing works from an a Olympic game bronze medalist point of view. Now we're going to move on to our third and final style of triathlon which is the Ironman. The Ironman is in a league of its own and is participated all around the world by hundreds of thousands of people. Again, the Ironman consists of two different styles of triathlon going from your 70.3 or half Ironman which is a 1.9 kilometer swim it's a 90k bike and then a half marathon, so 21 km run. On the flip side of that, you have your full Ironman, which is a 3.8 km swim. It's a 180 km bike and then, yes, a full marathon for the run. Now we're going to jump into a call with one of USA's best triathletes who can cover all three disciplines at an extremely high level. Guys, I give to you guys Ben Canute. Hey, Ben. Thank you for giving me a little bit of your time out of your uh, busy schedule. Uh, it means a lot. Let's just jump straight into it. So um, you've you've been doing a lot of 70.3 Ironman racing for a while now. So what is, what is something that you find the most challenging out of Ironman racing? 
Yeah, you know, from making the jump from Sprint and Olympic up to the half Ironman, I think the the biggest thing is nutrition and really nailing that down. So um, whether that's pre-race or the night before, or just during the race, it's making sure that you're fueled up and really paying attention to to making sure you have enough energy to last for that entire, you know, three and a half, four hour race. Yeah. Yeah, nice. All right. Um, so you're one of those very few athletes who are able to excel in a variety of different, you know, trial funds. You know, you've done super well in Super League. You've gotten some podium finishes in your, you know, your ITU World Cup races and you're doing exceptional in your Ironman racing. So out of uh, out of those three styles, which one's your favorite and why? Uh, so it's a hard question. I think I like the the variety, and that's what is keeping me going to to all the different styles. So I love the intensity in the super sprint racing and how it's all out and basically max effort for that twenty minutes. But I also love like the grind of the the half Ironman race and the strategy behind it. Yeah. Uh, I think kind of the, the strength and the intensity between those two play off of each other. And I think that's kind of what's kept me going back and forth and uh, making me a good athlete both distances. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's really cool. All right. So um, if you could give a couple or one piece of advice to people who are thinking of transitioning from, you know, that sprint and Olympic distance racing to, you know, 70.3 or even a full Ironman, what would it be? Well, I won't speak on the full Ironman just yet, but I think for the sprint and Olympic up to the half Ironman is have some patience with pacing and nutrition. So practice it in your, in your training and then try and implement exactly that in the race because yeah. a lot of times you can get caught up and uh, it's a lot harder to finish a half Ironman uh, when you blow up or you go out too hard and you're halfway through rather than if you're halfway through an Olympic. So I think patience is, is kind of a key. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So i um, adding on to that on average, how many hours would you say that you work on training wise? Yeah, that, that definitely varies by time of year and what we're training for. Um, I think it, it can be anywhere from about 20 hours up to I'll hit a max of 30, like at the peak of my build. So okay. and at that point, it, it all depends on what the focus is too. So um, like if we're going to take, for example, right now, I'd say I'm probably at about 20 hours a week, but a lot of that is focused on the run. Whereas, yeah. you know, in the build up to the half Ironman world championships, I'll be at 30 hours and it's a little bit more even spread, and probably a little bit more bike heavy at times. Yeah, right. Nice. All right. So um, what we'll do, we'll, I'll finish with one last question. I don't, you're, correct me if I'm wrong, you haven't raced a 70.3, uh, sorry, a full Ironman yet? Right. Uh, so um, what are your sort of plans on there? When, you, when are we going to see you hit that full Ironman distance? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Um, I think we still have a few years before uh, you really see me hit it, but I'm keeping my options open and really I just want to get out all of the speed that I can. There's a lot of half Ironman yeah. racing, a lot of Olympic and super sprint. And once you go up to that full distance, it's a, it's a pretty big full on commitment. So it's in my radars, but I'm, I'm taking my time and trying to practice what I preach and keep yeah. that patience moving up in the distance. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Ben, thank you so much for your time again. I know you've got a pretty busy schedule and you've probably got a big day ahead of you today. So, yeah, thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. Maybe I'll be in San Diego when everything's back to normal. Yeah, of course. No, appreciate it. Too easy. Thank you. Oh, hey, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Getting to know a little bit about some extremely talented triathletes. If you enjoyed this type of video and want to see more with these pros getting involved, do me a favor, go down, hit the subscribe button. See you all next week. Catch up.